makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and in today's episode of a Noob's 3D Printing Guide, it's time to set up a Cura profile for your new 3D printer. So in the last episode I spoke about slicers and what their function is and how they talk to the 3D printer. Today what I want to show you guys is how to download Cura, which is probably the most popular open source, uh, which is free. 3D printing slicing software, and I wanna show you how to create a profile for your 3D printer. So without further ado, let's jump on the PC and I'm gonna show you guys the whole process. So the first thing you need to do is actually download the software. So you're gonna to go to the Ultimaker website. I will leave the link in the video description. And as soon as you come to that page, you will be presented with the Ultimaker Cura software. Click on download for free. A pop-up will come just to see exactly what kind of person you are. And if you don't want to share any information, just simply click on, I don't want to share any information and just download the file. Once you launch the application, click all the usual next and the I agrees and the more next and wherever you want to install the software until it pretty much completes the installation. Once done, click on finish and launch Cura software. Once the program loads up, you will be presented with the screen and the first thing you need to do is actually create the profile for the printer. Now, while this will relate to the Profab Mini, you can actually use the same process for any other 3D printer. So first we're gonna to go to settings, printer, and also add printer. You will then be presented with a list of Ultimakers, which this is not. Um, there are also other custom 3D printers which are already preset, but the Profab Mini is not here. So what we will do is create a custom one, which is this one, custom FDM printer. So we're gonna change the printer name to Profab Mini, and we're gonna click on add printer. Next, you will be presented with the machine settings, and this is what matters the most when setting up a printer. We're gonna start with the, uh, with the build volume. So this will ask you what the size of the build volume of the printer is. Now, in the case of the Profab Mini, on the X, which is from left to right, it's 120 millimeters. Y, which is from front to back, it's also 120 millimeters. And the Z, which is the height of the build volume, is also. 120 millimeters. Next, you have the build plate type. Now, depending on the printer, if it's a delta, it would be elliptical. However, in this case, it's rectangular. Now, the next two check boxes are origin at center, which determines, which tells the slicer how the printer homes. Now, we know that the Profab Mini homes at the front left corner of the printer. For most deltas, the origin is at the center of the build plate, so we do not need to check that box. The next one specifies whether the printer will have a heat bed or not. In this case, it does, so we're gonna tick that box. G-code flavor refers to the language which the printer understands, which is this one right here. Um, for the time being, we're gonna not go into detail for that. However, just to know that there are many types, but the most popular one is most certainly Marlin, which in this case will apply for the Profab Mini. Next up, we're gonna to go to the second column. Now this section up here might not be relevant to many people who have a 3D printer. What these numbers represent are pretty much the size of the hot end assembly and determine the distance between the nozzle and the front of the assembly and the, the nozzle in the back, nozzle from side to side, and also from the nozzle to the start of the gantry. Now, the reason why those settings are there is because in some cases, some people might want to print several objects, but rather than printing them all at one go, pretty much saying it goes from one layer on one piece, then it goes to the next piece and starts another layer, this would determine the size of the um, hot end assembly and starts printing objects one by one. So first it prints one full object, then the uh, extruder head or the hot end assembly will move to another space, go back down and start printing another item. And these sizes would determine whether or not there is enough distance between one part and another for the nozzle or the uh, hot end assembly not to hit the other part. However, as I said, in this case, we will not be uh, using those, so you can ignore those. Next up is the number of extruders, which in the case of the Profab Mini, it's simply one extruder. The diameter of the material, which for the Profab Mini and most FDM printers is 1.75. 
and we will also enter the nozzle size, which the standard nozzle size on the ProVab Mini is 0.4 millimeters. These codes down here for now are not very relevant. It will take you a while to get into this, but you will eventually learn these and start tinkering with them. These are pretty much instructions for the printer. With every printer, you have a start code and an end code. And this is basically instructions for the printer on what to do before it starts printing. The same goes for the end code. However, this gives the uh, printer instructions on what to do after it finishes the print. So to give you a rough idea, the start code just tells the printer to home, basically set the nozzle in the home position it will lift up slightly from the build plate to extrude a bit of plastic and prime the nozzle. It will reset the extruder and it will then start printing the, uh, the G code. Once it's finished, it will simply switch off the hot end and the heat bed. It will retract a bit of filament and it will then home on the X and Y position, but not the Z because you don't want the nozzle to crash down onto the print you just did. And that's basically it. You just click on finish. And as soon as you uh, come out to the main menu, you can see that that is pretty much the volume of the printer. And just like that, the profile for Kura is set up. And that is it. That's all you need to do in order to set up a profile. Now, Kura is relatively simple in terms of setting up. Um, with other printers, you might require a bit more tweaking simply because they just have more options and other variables which might come in handy. However, in this case, with Kura, it, it works really well as is. So you shouldn't have any difficulty getting up and running. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I also want to thank Profab3D and Polymaker for making this series possible. Please make sure you check them out in the video description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will be more than happy to reply to them. In the meantime, if you like this episode, please leave a like, um, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.